Good morning. Robert, thank you for that beautiful prelude this morning. May God's blessings be with you all, and there's no reason in the world God would want to bless you today as you come here and, and honor God. Uh, I've been asked about the card that's in your bulletin. I'll explain that later. Just hang on to that. Vacation Bible School is this Wednesday and Thursday, 6.30 to 8.30. And let me call on Hannah to say a little bit more about that. Hannah and Ellis. Well, thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Ellis, for helping out today. <laughs> well, we have a, a one-time opportunity to serve a community kitchen lunch on Saturday, August 13th. And uh, Ron is uh, our headhunter for that, if we can have so enough volunteers for it. Uh, Ron, would you like to say something about that? just a great feeling and to meet the people that came in who uh, you wouldn't be able to distinguish from anybody you met at the mall or on the street. Uh, so it is a blessing to, to them and to us as well. I do want to read a brief uh, message from the Community Kitchen. Uh, dear friends, thank you for your recent donation to the Chattanooga Community Kitchen. Your gift of $250 helps us to continue our ministry of meeting the most basic needs of hungry, homeless, and vulnerable people in our community while offering a clear path to self-sufficiency. Thank you for your support. Sincerely, Barrett S. Young, CEO. So we have a great ministry there and have been there from the beginning. August 14th is a special day. It's the blessing of students and teachers. It's been a special day uh, for our students and teachers as they receive a blessing from the the elders 
there's an opportunity to bring school supplies if you'd like. Uh, wide ruled paper, uh, uh, big rubber erasers, just that kind of thing uh, to leave in the fellowship hall. Therefore, uh, DuPont Elementary, uh, uh, that we have Lynn Carroll volunteering there, and also Saudi Elementary, where Jessica James teaches. So we have that opportunity. If you'd like to know more about the list, uh, let me know. The call to worship today is this. Let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for as such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Good morning. Would you please stand and join me in the uh, opening hymn, number 286. This is the day we'll sing it through twice. Powerful Father, you are our strong tower, and you are almighty in power. You are our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in times of trouble. We pray that you guard us, Lord, and uphold us with your righteous hand during this time of worship. Put a hedge of protection around us. Bless us with the confidence that comes from the security of of hiding in the shadow of your wings. Be with us in all that we do this hour and in all the conversations we have. Keep us safe from the snares of the enemy who would distract us from you. We pray this in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and we'll have our preparation for the scripture reading. Good morning. This morning's scripture reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 5 through 12, and can be found on page 688 in your Pew Bibles. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see them naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, 
the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Dylan, Allison, Robert, today. I used to watch the Flintstones. I haven't seen the Flintstones in a while. I remember a particular show. Uh, sometimes Fred would get upset with his boss, Mr. Slate, at the gravel pit. And on one occasion, I remember that Fred went on a rant about Mr. Slate and said he was so cheap that he looked over the top of his glasses to keep from wearing them out. <laughs> I should try that. I might get a little mileage out of these. But my vision wouldn't be so good. That is a very cheap bridge over to what I want to talk about. God's vision for us. The book of Proverbs says that without a vision from God, the People perish. And when I thought about vision with this congregation, I was particularly drawn to verse 10 that Leah read today. If you will pour yourself out for the hungry, that I will make you a, a light in the darkness, a well-watered garden. But I'll say more about that a little bit later. This point in Isaiah 58 uh, exiles are returning from Babylon. Uh, they're coming back to reestablish their place in the land. And what they're finding is Jerusalem looks like a bomb went off there. It looks like a tornado hit it. It is still in ruins from the Babylonian invasion 75 years earlier. It is a disaster. And what is more... According to verse 12, the walls are broken down. The protective walls around the city, the, the city gates have been burned. And so they are exposed and vulnerable to their enemies, the Ammonites, the Samaritans, the Philistines. And they are disgraced because they can't defend themselves. It would be years later that... God would commission Nehemiah through the king to be governor over the province and he would bring the resources and the support and the authority of the king, King Anaxes, and they would rebuild the wall. As Nehemiah said, after it was finished, he said, our enemies lost their confidence because they could see that the work was done with God's help. But for now, the people are in a crisis. Nehemiah is not there yet. The walls are broken down. They're exposed. They're vulnerable. It's a crisis. And so they, they turn to God in the crisis. And they say, we are worshiping as hard as we can. We are fasting. We are kneeling on the ground in ashes, in sackcloth. We're starving ourselves with these fasts, and we want to know, why aren't you noticing and doing something about it? And God responds. God says, you can't expect your prayers to be heard on high, because when you end your fast, you're 
at each other's throats. You're treating your workers poorly. You want to know about a fast that I would want? I'll tell you. The fast I want is the one where you feed the hungry, clothe those who are naked, give shelter to the wanderer, do all these things. Treat your workers right. Take care of your families. Those are the kind of things that God wants from them. They are in a crisis. And Jesus, God says, I have something that matters more than the crisis. Do these things and you will be blessed. You'll see me at work, but only if you are a blesser first. I, I never looked up that word this week, bless her. I don't know if it's a real word, but you heard it here first. If it's not, I, I might copyright it. But you need to be a blesser first to see God at work. And the promise was, if you give yourselves to God's vision, then your light will shine in the ruins. You'll become like a spring of living water and you'll be like a well-watered garden that everybody wants to pick from you'll be known as a repairer of broken walls and a restorer of your streets and broken dwellings that was the promise and as nehemiah said those years later when that wall was rebuilt he gave, gave God the credit. Our enemies will know that we did it with God's help. That's a vision that God has for his people. And it's really not changed. Jesus took on this same vision. And we can hear it at his first sermon at his own church in Nazareth. He quotes from Isaiah 61, which is just a few verses, two few chapters away from this one. And he said, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And Jesus took that vision into his ministry and into his teaching and peter in the book of acts kind of summed up what he was all about he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil he took that vision of god right to the cross now that is a crisis to be nailed to a cross is a crisis I can't think of a worse crisis in my life to be in that position. And I would certainly be thinking about myself. I'd be self-absorbed if I was in that situation. None of us even have a taste of that. But for Jesus, something mattered more. It was God's vision to proclaim release to the captives. We were all captives to sin. And Jesus, by his death on the cross made a way home to the Father when we could not have made a way home for ourselves. Not in a million lifetimes. We, as a church, have been given a vision too. Again, that, that verse 10 stood out for me. If you, you spend yourselves, and that, that ancient word really means to pour out. If you pour out yourself for the hungry, then your light will shine in the darkness. This church has a theme song. And the title of the theme song is Feeding the Hungry for Christ. And those of you who've been here a while have seen this happen. Feeding those who are physically hungry. Feeding those who are hungry for a better life. Feeding those who are hungry for Christ. As far as feeding those who are physically hungry, 
as Ron said, we've been involved with the community kitchen for years. We are not supporting Red Bank Community Food Pantry financially, but with volunteers who make a difference. It serves thousands and thousands of people. It's the largest food pantry in Hamilton County. The Northside Neighborhood House has a food pantry too. They, they served 90, I think, in the last, last uh, three months or so, in the last message I got. We do a lot of things to feed the hungry for Christ. Uh, Rivermont Elementary, I don't remember the percentage of the students who have food insecurity. Then there's feeding those who are hungry for a better life. The scholarships for Cambodia, those students want a better life. They don't want to work in a factory all their days. Northside Neighborhood House provides training for those who hunger for a better life. Salvation Army serves those who are hungry for a better life. And then they're serving the hungry for Christ. Through every ministry in our church, through worship and evangelism, through fellowshipping together, uh, through property, through all the different things that we do, teaching. Uh, if I left anybody out, you know who you are. Uh, we have two prayer groups to serve those who are hungry for Christ. Years, not that long ago, you had a young woman in your fellowship here named Nikki. And Nikki came from a world that was one of homelessness. She only knew homelessness, an unsettled life. And you brought her here. The elders took turns bringing her here to worship. She was hungry for a better life. And you taught her one. You taught her a better life. She is 23 years old now, if you can believe it. She's got a good job. She is making a good salary. She's learning skills. And she says that she loves you very much and misses you. She hungered for Christ here. And you nurtured that. You fed her. And she was baptized right here in this sanctuary, accepting Christ. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Her answer was yes. When we bless, we see God at work. Last fall, the Cambodia scholarship team uh, was getting ready for an auction. And the theme of it was promises kept. $130 for each student, uh, 30, 30 students. By the way, uh, there's a slideshow uh, in the foyer that Melanie sent to show what the school looks like there. Though we were still struggling with in-person worship with the pandemic, and they looked out on the congregation, which appeared to be five to them that day, and wondered if they could meet the goal. But they pressed on with enthusiasm. Now, it turns out, God is very wealthy. Put together all the richest people in the world, and it's nothing compared to God's wealth. The scripture says, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And you know what else? Guess what's in your wallet? Everything we have, everything in our bank accounts, everything in our portfolios is from God, belongs to God. We're merely the stewards of it, taking care of it. And that day of the auction and the days following, $5,500 was raised. That is a staggering amount of money, not just for 30 scholarships, but 37 scholarships. As Nehemiah said, they could see that the work was done with God's help. If they had not chosen to do it, if they had chosen maybe to wait another year, we wouldn't have seen God at work. Now, it's one thing for a great big church with a lot of numbers in all directions to raise $5,500 for scholarships. But it's another thing when a little church 
gets together and raises that kind of money for scholarships for children on the other side of the world for them to have a better life. God blesses us this sized congregation reveals in a way a big truck congregation camp God at work. They could see God at work. I believe that there are people in the community and there are already people in the community who come in to this fellowship who yearn to see God at work in the world. Who yearn to see it to a church this size and what's the quote that I've heard on more than one occasion? I can't believe what you do with the numbers that you have. That is a direct quote and I've heard it more than once. I know that there are people in our community who are hungry to see God at work. And this church family reveals it. We have that unique, powerful, and beautiful vision. And there are people in this community who, who hunger to be a part of the vision, to feed the hungry for Christ, those who are physically hungry, those who hunger for a better life. Those who hunger for Christ. I know that there are people like that. Now I have a big ask for you today, and that involved the index cards I gave to you. By the way, uh, I prayed over each and every one of those cards when I put them in the bulletin. I prayed over each and every card holder that holds extra cards. I even put cards under the chalice and the plate here as the elder blesses the table this morning and what I would like to ask you to do is some of what the Bible calls discernment uh, it simply means discerning God's voice from all the other voices in the world including our own voices and to do that I simply ask that you would write the first thing that pops into your mind about how are we to lead off with the beautiful, powerful vision that we have been given. How are we to lead off with it in everything we do? You might write down a suggestion for the minister or the elders or the deacons or the board. You might write down a scripture reference that comes into your mind. You might write down a prayer asking the Lord to reveal the Lord's will on this. And how would God not want to answer such a prayer? You can draw on it if you want to. I'm an art lover. I would love that. Or it may come into your mind an idea and you think, that is the stupidest thing that ever came into my head. But if it honors God, God doesn't think it's stupid. And what I would ask you to do, and by the way, if nothing comes to mind instantly, that's okay too. Uh, take the card home, stick it on your refrigerator under your Sea Rock City magnet. Put it in the, your summer reading, your romantic reading. Uh, I won't be reading that, but uh, you can put it in as a bookmark. Put it on the keyboard in the office later on. Or uh, put it in the mailbox. Send me a message, a text, whatever. Hand it to me personally. And please make sure you watch me put it straight in my pocket. Because I have a tendency to lay things down. But despite that, I will cherish each and every one that comes back. Because I will consider it to be inspired by the Almighty God who gives us the help. Let's pray about that. Dear God, we, we bring this holy and sacred big ask to you. How would you have us share the unique, beautiful, and powerful vision you have gifted us with? How would you have us feeding the hungry for Christ, the physical hunger, the hunger for a better life, the hunger for Christ? Show us the persons drawn to this vision. Show us the hungry your heart breaks for, and grant us provision to meet their needs, as you are meeting ours. 
Because as it is said, wherever you guide, you provide. We pray for faith to believe that your vision is ours, given not because our means are sufficient, but because your means are. Above all, glorify yourself and make us witnesses who speak of your glory. May we be blessed, sirs, as you have so abundantly blessed us in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, just a moment, we'll have the uh, Lord's Supper, but first, Robert and Alan have a communion hymn for us. Please join me in number 548, The Old Rugged Cross. We'll sing the first and third verses. many of you know, I was a teacher of business management at the local university for 35 years. What some of you might not know is my undergraduate degree was in chemistry. Yes, chemistry. If you've ever taken chemistry, you know where this is probably going. So actually, I like chemistry. I mean, I like the fact that it, I like the protons, and I like the electrons, and I like the neutrons, and I like my professors pretty well. I went to all my classes. I read all the chapters in the books. And I made terrible grades. And the reason, the thing that just killed me about chemistry, much different so than, than business, was that I would read the book, I would try to do the homework, I would go to classes, I would get the exam and look down and say, what in the world, did, where did this come from? Never saw anything like that in my life. I, my teachers believed in really testing us, they said. Well, 
Jesus doesn't really test us like my chemistry teachers did. That is, in our denomination, everybody gets an A plus in Christianity with a very few simple questions on the test. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Full credit. Do you forgive neighbors who have offended you? Yeah, it took me a while, but I finally got over it. Check. 100%. And Jesus paid the way, the final test, entrance into heaven by paying and taking the test for us. He went to the cross so that we could pass the test. And all of us, everybody in this room, has admittance to heaven if you want it. Just believe in Jesus. We celebrate Jesus' sacrifice every Sunday with a couple of symbols. Bread representing his broken body as pronounced by him at the Last Supper. Let us take the bread to remember his broken body. And the cup representing his spilt blood. So as we go home after church, have a good feeling. Like that A plus you just got on that paper. Anyone who is listening here in the sanctuary or in the parking lot, or our parking lot broadcast or online, we invite you, if you are curious about this Christ who has brought us to take such risks out of faith, that I would be happy to have that conversation with you about why we do that. It's not because we're good, but because God is so good to us. You've also heard all the various ministries, both within the church family and in the community that we're a part of. That's part of our budget. And if you would feel that we have been faithful to Christ in what we are doing with his money, then we invite you to join us in the spiritual discipline of giving because it is a, a spiritual discipline that honors God. But for now, I invite you to stand with me in honor of the Lord as we pray his prayer that he taught us. Whose Father, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Robert and Allison have a closing hymn for us. Our closing hymn is number 588, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth verses.
closing prayer is a prayer of protection for you through this week. God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. With that, let's have our prayer response this morning. Join me for Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. service is ended, but not our personal service to the Lord. Take care.